And Tyshawn Griffin, Illinois has been recruiting for two full years. He was one of the early guys that we knew was going to be a power five prospect in the city of Chicago. And for a second straight year, Illinois wins a big uh, Chicago Public League recruitment. Last year was Malik Elzey. This year, Tyshawn Griffin. I talked with Tyshawn yesterday. Adding Malik Elzey was, was big uh, for him just to see another guy do that. But uh, they built a relationship. George McDonald's just done a fantastic job uh, of recruiting his wide receiver room. But what do you think of what Tyshawn Griffin out of Morgan Park adds the Illinois wide receiver crew? Yeah, I mean, I started my film piece on on Griffin by saying, you know, he's really done it all at Morgan Park. He's played running back. He's played a little bit of wildcat quarterback. He's been a receiver. He's played defensive back. You know, he he worked out at a few camps this sp this spring as a defensive back, and I thought there might be a chance that he could play corner at the next level. But when you look at what he does with the ball in his hand, whether it's as a receiver, as a wildcat quarterback, maybe taking jet sweeps, things like that, punt returner, kick returner. You know, I, I think the special teams phase of the game is important to mention here too um he's just an explosive athlete he, he's not the biggest guy out there he's not the strongest guy out there but he's just got that speed that that's tough to teach and he's got a great knack for for getting to space getting to open space and, and getting chunk plays and so that i think is where his biggest value can be i mean illinois got a couple of good slot receivers on the roster right now but i mean it's probably isaiah williams last year uh, Canary Welcher is still young. He enrolled early, so that helped give him a bit of a head start. But they're going to need a little bit more at slot receiver in the long run. Um, Hank Beatty is kind of more of a, I don't want to call him a possession slot receiver, but he's not necessarily a guy that's going to just stretch the field down the seam um, the way that a guy like Griffin can. So I think he brings an, an added dimension and kind of fills in a little bit of the void that Isaiah Williams is going to be leaving when he moves on. Yeah, and Isaiah Williams was a big sell here. Uh, Isaiah's nickname is One, so is Tyshawn Griffin's. He wears number one, so he could just slide right into that jersey number if he wants to, and if Illinois lets him, Joey. Uh, but slot receiver, man, they've done a really good job of building that position up. You know, and, and you have Griffin behind Beatty and Wiltshire. They're very high on. So post life uh, of Isaiah Williams, who's probably going to lead the team receiving for a third straight year, uh, George McDonald's put together a pretty good room there. Yeah, and, he, and he's done it in a way that you've kind of staggered ages a little bit uh, with Hank Beatty, now Canary Wilcher, and, and into Tyshawn Griffin. So you're, you kind of let that development happen naturally, and, and then you, if you get a guy who like a Griffin, or if we know Canary Wilcher got a lot of buzz, who comes in and takes time and, and earns those spots, and that's good for Illinois football. Uh, but they've done uh, – that's uh, really impressive. That room was bad when this – coaching staff took over there wasn't depth there wasn't a lot of high-end talent I mean it was just a, it wasn't a very good room and they've completely rebuilt it and <laughs> almost similar like Bielma gets in the trenches right and that you build the team inside out like they've kind of built this receiver room inside out um, Isaiah Williams is a quarterback when they got there you go put him in there then you had a Beatty a Wilcher and now Tyshawn Griffin that's that's important and, and like in this offense I, I think they need guys in the slot who as Ryan mentioned can can get down the seam or can make guys miss. You need that elusive guy. Uh, and Isaiah Williams having that tape to show Tyshawn Griffin and say, see, like this, mm -hmm. there's so many similarities. That's a huge pitch. And look, I mean, think about this. So like that doesn't happen if they don't move him from quarterback in spring of 21. Yeah. And, and I mean, the offer list was, was really impressive here. Um, Wisconsin, Tennessee, were kind of in the mix, Purdue, Missouri, Michigan state, Louisville, Kansas State, Iowa State, Cincinnati, like that's a that's a good recruiting win in the state for Illinois. And speed, got to have speed. And Barry Lunny uh, showed last year that he can use Isaiah Williams pretty well. I, I think he could be used even better. Uh, I think he can use even more as this offense uh, matures. So the fact that they actually have a sell that you can land Malik Elzey and Tyshawn Griffin in back-to-back -back classes uh, is really impressive. All right, I think we all expected Illinois at some point was going to land. Carlos Orr, but he is on board. Illinois, the only power five offer for the six foot four wide receiver out of Tennessee. Uh, not a surprise here, but add more length to this wide receiver room, which they've done the last couple of years with Elsie, Colin Dixon, Ashton Hollins, Ian Pugh. Now you had Carlos Orr, who's actually a little bit bigger strength wise than, than some of those other players outside of um, so the, at least Hollins and, and Pugh coming in. Yeah, and he's got a big catch radius. Um, you know, they've had some taller receivers in the past under under Beckman, under Cubit, but 
they weren't really as athletic as as Orr is. You know, Orr, I think you see that big body and you maybe underestimate his speed, but he, I think he's a legitimate four five guy. I know he lists himself as a four five time in the 40, but he looks like he, he can actually run away from guys. I mean, he's got that long stride that covers a lot of ground with each step and surprising change of direction. You know, there are a lot of big guys who take a long time to, to change direction because they got to slow that weight down or maybe they can't cut as hard. He, he can change direction really well and, and he doesn't necessarily need to do like a hard cut or anything. It's just, he's got great body control that allows him to kind of get his defender moving one way and then shake back the other way. But um, you know, he can stretch the field. He, he's a guy that can run routes inside, outside. I, I th- he can go up and win the contested ball, you know, no slide on his quarterback, but there are a few of the throws on his film here that the ball is a bit underthrown and he's able to come back, recognize how the ball has been thrown and come back and, and go up over the defensive back and get it. But with that size and his ability to jump and track the ball and catch it away from his body, I mean, I, I think this might be a bit of a steal. He's probably... If I had to say of, of any of the guys in the class, outside of maybe Brandon Hansen, I'd say he's probably one of the more underrated guys in this class because when I watched this tape, I was like, how does this guy only have one Power 5 offer, and that's Illinois? Like, I know that Gatlinburg's probably not the most over-recruited area in the world, but like this guy, his tape's good enough, and he was a 1,000-yard receiver, and how's he just – I don't understand how he doesn't have at least some like mid-level offers or at least some other Power 5 offers. Yeah, he reminds me of a quicker, faster Sam Mays, maybe. Remember Sam Mays? Like just huge, but Sam was not the fastest guy. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, so I, I just felt like he, he gave me some of those vibes. He's just a little quicker uh than Sam was. Joey, I mean, we've written about this a lot. The revamping of this, you know, receiver room has been pretty epic here. <laughs> um, you know, you got underclassmen now of Hank Beatty, who's a sophomore, and then the rest. Freshman Ian Pugh, Ashton Holland, Sean Miller, all redshirt freshmen. Colin Dixon, Canary Wilcher, Malik Elzey, all true freshmen. Now you're bringing in Tyshawn Griffin and Carlos Orr behind it. I don't think wide receiver is going to be a great strength next year, maybe, unless Malik Elzey and Hank Beatty and all those guys, Canary Wilcher, are ready to go. But I can see wide receiver being a strength at Illinois in a couple of years. I think their starters are good now. They just don't have a lot of depth there. But George McDonald's done a really good job of adding talent here. You're you're on mute, Joey. Second time. What a nightmare. Do we need um, a mute jar to where you have to put like a buck in every time you're on mute? It's, yeah, tab me up if you don't mind. Um, yeah, I mean, again, this this wasn't a very good group when this coaching staff took over. And I'm with you. I I like the long term. I like the short term. We've talked about this a lot. Intermediate term is meaning 2024, 25, maybe a little bit on the back end of that. I, I do wonder what that's going to look like because you have some of these guys, um, Ian Pugh and Ashton Holland. Now you had a Carlos Orr. Um, you're going to need some wait time, right? And, and like you, you got to get bigger. So what's the timeline look like there? But in terms of talent, like they, they've added and they've had some good recruiting wins uh, in the way that they've added to this wide receiver room. And George McDonald, like it, this is a, like it, I, I'm with Ryan. The Power Five offer thing is interesting because this isn't. I don't know, October, and George McDonald is going all in on prioritizing him. It's like late May, now into June, and we've seen him really circle Carlos Orr as a guy that's his guy. And, like, that should tell you something, yeah? Like, this isn't a late, like, oh, no, we need a wide receiver. This is this is someone he prioritized pretty early in the process, and they moved to close down pretty early in the process. I mean, in the, of our, in the words of our friend Tom Fornelli, will it work? I don't know, but, like, you have to read what how this has happened and tell that tells you what they think of him. Yeah. Ryan, did you have anything to add? I was just saying, I mean, like Joey, to your point, multiple visits to his high school and they they got him on campus and there was it's no hesitation. Like they, they went in on him, they believed in him and you know, we'll see how it works out long term, but all the signs are there on the film at least that that he can be good. I, I don't know what the level of competition is like down there, but I'd have to imagine they're not pushovers so not bad football not bad. no 